Some people say that life begins at 40. Life may begin at 50. I'm here to tell you that life begins at Calvary. And I bring you to a place many years ago. About 2,000 years ago, I bring you to Jerusalem, outside the gate. I bring you Jesus Christ, who has been beaten. He's been spit upon. He's had a crown of thorns bashed upon his skull. He's a bleeding, pussy mess. He's beyond recognition. They describe the cat of nine tails as a farmer that has plowed the field across his back. The Bible says that they pulled his beard. I don't know what great pain you know. I have a beard and it hurts to have somebody tug your beard. Yet the Bible says they pulled the, the hair out of Jesus' beard. They punched him. They beat him. They pulverized him. He was bruised for our iniquities. With his chastisement, we have peace. He's upon that cross. He's gone to that cross willingly. He laid down his life for us sinners. He is dying upon that cross. He is suffering upon the cross of Calvary because we are sinners. And there are two thieves with Jesus. One to the right and one to the left. And at a point of time upon the cross, even they are mocking Jesus. I don't care if you come and mock me. My Savior was mocked. Upon his cross, he was mocked. By sinners. The whole entire nation of Israel is mocking Jesus on that cross. He is hanging, naked, suffering, bleeding on that cross for our sins. And they're mocking him. They're making fun of him. Let's see if God will come down and get him. If thou be God, save yourself. And there's a point in time one of the thieves rebukes the other thief. And he tells that thief, hey, we're guilty. We're supposed to be here crucified. But that one, that Jesus, he's innocent. Jesus does not deserve to be here. Even Pilate, three times, Pilate, I find no fault in him. Still, Jesus Christ is hanging on the cross, innocent, holy, without guilt. For we that are guilty, we that are sinners, he is dying and suffering upon that cross. Upon the cross, you suffocate of your body fluids. You are suffering. You are suffocating as you're nailed to that cross being crucified. And that cross... Next to that cross, there's a thief that turns to Jesus. 
and that thief has repented of his sins. And he turns to Jesus and said, Jesus, when thou enterest into thy kingdom, remember me. And Jesus said to that thief, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. That dying thief didn't go to church. That dying thief did not believe in a pope. That dying thief was not baptized. That dying thief did not give money. That dying thief was saved that afternoon before he died. By putting his faith and trust in God, in the Savior, that died upon the cross of Jesus. Upon the cross of Calvary. And before Jesus died, gave up the ghost, he said, it is finished. And he gave up the ghost. Jesus Christ, God, died for the sinning man. Shed his blood. The Lamb of God. Which take away the sin of the world. Died. All according to the scriptures. And they took him down. And they took a spear and they pierced his side and out, flood, out flowed blood and water or water and blood. And they buried the body of Jesus, the dead body, the dead body, the dead body. As you would do with any dead body, you bury it. Three days and three nights later, the women came, and the women were coming for a dead body. And they seen that the stone of the tomb had been rolled away. And they seen an angel. Angels never have wings. They're never females. That's a Catholic mythology. And the angel at the empty tomb told the women, he is not here. He is risen. Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That was about 2,000 years ago and Jesus still saves. And he's still willing to save your soul today. You see, you take a pope, you bury him, he stays buried. You take Joseph Smith, you put him in the ground, he's still in the ground. You take Mormons, you put him in the ground, they stay in the ground. You take Catholics, they put him in the ground, they stay in the ground. You put Baptists in the ground, they stay in the ground. But Jesus came out alive. And was seen by many multitudes for 40 days before he ascended up to heaven. That's the Jesus, the God. You say, preacher, what's the difference between your Jesus, your religion, and my religion? The empty tomb. And don't tell me Catholics have the empty tomb because Jesus is still nailed to the cross. You can't have Jesus' resurrection and still be nailed to the cross. Don't tell me I grew up as a Polish Catholic. I came out of the Polish Catholic and got saved through Jesus Christ alone. Now, I've been saved for 34, 35 years. 
Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing satisfies greater than the satisfaction that Jesus saves. Nothing's better to know that these things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. I know. Many Catholics don't know. Many Baptists don't know. Pentecostals enjoy, but they don't have no insurance. Uh, refreshing water on a hot Florida day. But there is a refreshing water for any day. The refreshing water is the water of life. And guess who said he is the water of life? Jesus Christ. Jesus said, whoever drinks of, of the fountains of living water shall never thirst again. Material water, you, you'll get thirsty. You'll need another drink. But eternal water. Oh, the satisfaction. I know I'm saved. I know Jesus can save. I know Jesus will save you. I know the blessed hope. Do you know Jesus? And the question is, does Jesus know you? Outside of religion. I'm not talking religion. I'm not talking works. One woman goes, oh, faith and works. I got the faith and I'm working showing you about Jesus. Her faith and works was, oh, you shouldn't be doing that. You're too loud. That's, what kind of works is that? That's rebellion. I mean, you need to get down and repent if you get offended at the preaching of Jesus. If the name of Jesus offends you, you need to get down on your knees and say, God, where am I wrong? Because that's one name. I should never be offended at the name of Jesus. That man is over there. He's preaching. He's exalted. Jesus, I'm offended. What is wrong with my life? What is wrong with my testimony? That guy has joy in Jesus. And I'm upset that he's preaching Jesus. Something wrong with you. When something else gives you better pleasure than Jesus Christ, you're at sin. You're at fault. You need to repent. You need to confess your sin so God can forgive you and cleanse you. Because when you put something above God, you're into idolatry. Idolatry, sin. Our God's a jealous God. When you worship something better than what He has to offer. And you only think it's better. But in all actuality, it's worse. Are you hopeless? Come to Jesus, the blessed hope. Are you at the end of your life? Come to the eternal life. That's in Jesus. Is religion dragging you down? Is religion unsatisfying? Come out of that religion and come to Jesus Christ. And know that Jesus Christ saves. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Tis so simple to believe in Jesus. Do you have fears? 
Are you fear of dying? Do you fear tomorrow? Bring your fears to Jesus. Bring that sin of fear to the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Come and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And know. Religion says, no, you cannot know. And the Bible says, these things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. You can know and have assurance. Maybe you have no insurance because maybe you don't, maybe you don't have salvation. You got to beware because the Apostle Paul tells us there's another Jesus. You may be believing in the wrong Jesus. God has a Jesus. Satan has many Jesuses. You got to have the Jesus that's God and said he is the way. You know, Satan and his Jesus, well, we are all going to heaven. We're all just doing well. Everything's just so wonderful. Oh, if I die, you're only going to the grave. Oh, oh, that's, that's Satan preaching. And Satan's pleasure would be that you go to hell with him for all eternity. Satan enjoys people being in torment. And the angels rejoice in one sinner that repents and gets right. Salvation is a free gift. It can't be taxed. It can only be received by God. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. Come and see the mercy and the grace and the love that God is offering to you through Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You'll perish in religion. You'll perish in being good. You'll perish without faith and belief in Jesus Christ. Death will come. And if you die without faith and belief in Jesus, You will die and you will wake up in hell and you'll never come out. Until the day of the great white throne judgment. And you'll come out the great white throne dungeon. You'll experience the second death You'll be judged by Jesus Christ who died for you. You'll be found at fault and you'll be cast into the lake of fire that burneth forever. Because you will not put your faith and trust 
in Jesus Christ. You have chosen to reject Jesus, and Jesus will reject you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. No tickets, no entrance. No blood, no heaven. So simple. It is so simple. Even a child can get saved. 